All right, so it looks like it's uh, time. So we're very happy to have Andrew Hanlon speaking today on the Fukaya Seidel, on Fukaya Seidel categories, mirror to toric varieties, which is partly joint work in progress with Jeff Hicks. So uh, okay. without further ado, we can begin. All right, thank you. And thanks to all the organizers for putting on the seminar. It's been uh, really great so far and great to have uh, some kind of universal seminar going on. Uh, and um, yeah, and all the talks have gone like so smoothly lately. This makes me very nervous that this one won't, but we'll see. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, so uh, as Catherine said, this is part of this is uh, based on joint work with Jeff and uh, and Jeff's here. So like he can, I can delegate him to like answer all the questions in the chat or something. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so, okay, so uh, I'm gonna give like a very uh, biased overview of mirror symmetry for toric varieties. Um, so, I mean, every time I give this talk and try to give like an accurate uh, or some version of this talk and try to give an accurate overview of like everything that's known, then I just run out of time. So if I don't talk about like your favorite version or like your particular version, then I'm happy if you bring it up in the uh, question and answers. Okay, so um, I'll start with some like uh, very uh, preliminary stuff. So just about toric varieties. Um, because I think that uh, for this purpose, we're going to think about them a little bit differently than like your average symplectic geometer thinks about it. So throughout this talk, Xn will just be, well, the n is just the dimension, but X will be some smooth uh, projective. So um, in other words, you can just think compact, but it's a little bit more than that, uh, toric variety. And we want to think about this as some compactification uh, of C star to the N. Okay, so uh, from the point of view of symplectic geometry and like your average symplectic geometer, it's probably going to think about this uh, as a symplectic toric manifold, which I mean they are the same thing, but uh, usually in symplectic geometry we like to think about this, uh, think of this in terms of its moment polytope. And uh, the, so this is some polytope, uh, which is in uh, Rn, which if we're going to be very like invariantly minded, uh, this Rn is really some lattice, which I'll call M tensor with Rn. I'll also call this MR maybe. Okay, so um, I'll, pro I'll probably like continue to keep both like the uh, invariant and non and co picking coordinates way going. So I mean, for example, in the most basic example, we like to think about uh, maybe, okay, let's start with, let's sort of draw it this way. Let's start, we have some closed interval matching up with P1, and maybe we have some triangle that corresponds to P2. Okay, so, but, uh, and uh, the boundary of the polytope matches up with the um, with the toric divisors. So the stuff that we're adding to compactify C star to the end to get this toric variety. So, um, okay, but uh, for us, like this uh, toric variety is gonna be on the algebraic geometry side of mirror symmetry. So uh, this is usually, so this is not really the best way to think about it in terms of algebraic geometry, at least for our purposes. So, uh, so let me just rephrase this in equivalent, but possibly more confusing if you're thinking, if you're used to the more symplectic way uh, notion. So it's useful to think of X in terms of a fan. So, so this is just some, uh, some uh, collection of cones. Uh, this is also in some RN but it's really like the dual Rn. So 
there is some dual lattice, uh, which we'll call N, which is NR. So uh, let me actually make some notation for this. So the fan I'll call sigma. Okay, so, um, so what this fan is, if you take the polytope and just take its normal, uh, so the normal vectors to the divisors are the generate, uh, to, the, to the boundary generate this fan. So uh, for example, um, if we look at P1, uh, maybe I'll draw it in some way. So I have this, the, the origin of Rn, and then I have two rays. My fan consists of two rays that are generated by one and minus one. And this chord kind of, if we think about P1, uh, if I draw a picture, this black point, so here, when we think in the fan picture, the, the dimension matching is kind of the opposite. So this back black point corresponds to my dense C star to the N, and the red rays just correspond to two points. So let's say maybe infinity and zero. Um, okay, and same thing for P2. So uh, I have some point and let's say, okay, so I'll keep using red for the ray. So I have uh, three one dimensional cones like this that are normal to those, uh, to the facets of the polytope for P2. And I also have, I mean, these regions in between are part of the data of this fan. So um, if I try and draw this geometrically, I mean, I'll fail, but uh, it looks like, so I have these three boundary divisors that look like P1s and these big, uh, green open parts just correspond to points. They're intersection points. And then there's this uh, black, like C star to the end, maybe in the middle somehow. And that's what P2 kind of looks like. So this fan really tells you the same information basically as the polytope um, about how this, uh, this sits as a compactification. And to make some notation, so we'll set uh, A to be, um, so I'm gonna choose some fan for X and I set A to be uh, the set of primitive generators uh, of this fan. So what that means is I just take all the rays of my fan and take the uh, integral vectors uh, that generate them. So uh, for example, uh, in the P2 case, this would just be the set of after we make this identification, we set up one, zero, uh, zero, one, and minus one, minus one. So uh, I guess I should have wrote that on this picture here, but so this, this one is generated by one, zero, this one is generated by zero, one, this one is generated by minus one, minus one. Okay, so, um, so that's kind of some basics. And so what's our goal for this talk? So the goal is to um, understand in maybe some simple way and the most explicit way we can, uh, the Fukayasidal or a Fukayasidal maybe is better, a Fukayasidal category mirror to uh, the derived category of coherent sheaves on X. And really, I mean, for our purpose, there'll be some stuff later that doesn't explicitly sit, talk about line bundles, but really we're thinking just here about like the category, most relevant for us will be the category of line bundles on X sitting inside of this, uh, which, which generates this category. So, okay, so uh, how we're gonna understand this kind of homological mirror symmetry statement, uh, well, we wanna do it in a way that's very co uh, compatible with SYZ mirror symmetry. So. Uh, so Strominger, Yao, and Zaslo tell us uh, how we should think about mirror symmetry uh, geometrically. Okay, so uh, this says that uh, mirror um, collab Yao
uh, which for us will just mean that C1 is zero. I mean, for us, the only uh, manifold that I'm going to apply this to is C star to the n. So uh, mirror club, yeah, manifolds come with dual uh, torus vibrations. And I want to be extremely vague in like the statement of this, but this is again just to be, this is again just going to be some motivation really for the definitions that I'm going to make. So uh, for us, um, let's say this is really uh, only C star to the N for us. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, I mean, feel free to ask questions like as I go. I'm not gonna, I don't, if, if somebody asks a question, I can, I'll see it. So uh, don't wait for me to like stop and ask for questions. But okay, so um, so how does this work for, for us? So I'm gonna draw a diagram. So uh, I have my, my uh, toric variety X and I have the C star to the N that sits inside of it. And you should really uh, think about this as N tensor C star, but uh, we'll leave it at that. And okay, so now again, like your, your first instinct as a symplectic geometer may be, okay, well, I want some kind of a torus vibration, so I should look, uh, and I care about X, so I should look at like the moment map of X to, uh, to this uh, Rn, which is from M. But, but um, again, we want to think about this as uh, algebraically. So I don't want to use the symplectic data really here. So this is not what I want to do. But instead, I have a map here that comes kind of more from the Calabi-Yau structure that, I mean, in this case, will just be the log map, uh, the log norm of all the coordinates to some Rn, which is uh, my, actually my Nr, and the fan sits inside of this. Okay, and I also have a map from some other C star to the N, uh, which I'll call U. And this one is a moment map. So this C star to the N, I can also, from N I can complexify it to get a torus, or I can also take its cotangent, the cotangent bundle of this NR. So this is really uh, T star NR mod some lattice in the fibers. Or even more explicitly, I mean, this is has this is the the cotangent bundle is trivial, so this just looks like n cross uh, m r mod m. Okay, so uh, and the dual the fibers of the cotangent are naturally identified with the dual space the n r. Okay, so but more explicitly in coordinates here, I just I'm I'm fixing some symplectic uh, some toric symplectic form on c star to the n. Uh, so that it looks like this, uh, where the thetas are um, n zero two pi, and uh, for instance, u i might be log uh, norm, might just be log norm z i if it's the standard symplectic form. But I mean, we we really don't care so much about. I mean, we'll care so about it a little bit, but. We might need a little bit more flexibility with respect to the complex structure. So, or UI might be some function of, let's say, log norm Z1 up to log norm Zn. So I just kind of change things by a diffeomorphism. Maybe. Okay, so now, uh, so, so C star to the N is mirror to itself and it has, and I have these dual torus vibrations. Um, and we kind of want to understand what what to do, so what does this compactification X tell us to do without thinking, I mean, traditionally we would think about it symplectically and count some disk, but we don't want to do that. So, uh, so what happens uh, kind of as I go to infinity in this picture? So, uh, well, this fan tells me uh, if I go in certain directions, which divides do I hit? So uh, as um, torus fibers, approach um, the divisors uh, at infinity, we kind of need to have uh, some subtori collapse. Oops.
Okay, so uh, I mean the picture is just that say maybe in P2 I have my fan, let's draw better than that, I have my fan that's like this and I go off like in some direction here, um, maybe I'll draw it in red, so and above this point I have some torus fiber and and I go off into the, this divisor at infinity, and this thing has to kind of come into some circle, just. Okay, so uh, what does that mean on the dual torus? Well, on the dual torus, the dual torus is just like Homs uh, from this thing. So uh, on the dual torus, this tells us, and if you, th you need to think carefully about, say that if this ray is alpha, what if you, trace this diagram carefully what uh, what um, loop corresponds to what, but um, this means that we should have uh, theta dot alpha is at least approaching a constant, but I'll just say equal to a constant, uh, let's say near infinity. Okay, and maybe, uh, and maybe for some purposes, maybe this constant is gonna be zero. Um, just because it's uh, kind of convenient to pick one. Um, but maybe we'll see how that comes up. Okay, so, um, so that gives us some motivation for what to do now. So, uh, so we can record this data now. Now, if we want to do some kind of flower theory on C star to the N that reflects this data, there's kind of two ways to do this. So, um, Well, there's probably more than two, so, but there are several ways to do this. So let, I'll just, there's definitely more than two, but I'll just write two ways uh, to record this data for flow theory. Okay, so the first one that I'll talk about, uh, the first one is we can think that this is just recorded in, time, in, in this uh, Fang, Lu, Lu, Troyman, Zaslo skeleton. Uh, so, and I think that they kind of had a similar motivation maybe to what I gave to construct this. So from now on, of course, I'll just call this the FLTZ skeleton. Um, so what is this? This is uh, just a set, as a set. So it's gonna be some, singular Lagrangian in C star to the N. Uh, well, remember the C star to the N, we can think about it has one factor that uh, where the fan lives. So uh, I'm talking about here. And it has another factor that's kind of like the dual space of that. So one way to write this is it's just the union uh, over the cones in the fan of the, the cone itself cross uh, its perpendicular. So like all things that vanish on it. So, so you start to see this like theta dot alpha equals zero type thing. You could also write this, I mean, this is exactly the same thing as the set of U theta such that uh, theta dot alpha is zero uh, when U is in the interior of the star of alpha, where the star of that, where the star of alpha is just like all cones that contain, I mean, in other words, I take the union of all the cones that contain alpha. All right, um, and uh, for, for thinking about this as some kind of like stop at infinity, it's, it's convenient also to take the, the Legendrian version of it, so, uh, I'll just have some notation. Uh, lambda sigma is the intersection of this Lagrangian with, uh, okay, so maybe this is a little bit unfortunate, but the boundary infinity of C star to the N. In this sense, I don't mean like the, the, this compactification of the toric divisor. I mean, here, this means uh, the contact boundary. So, 
So this is, of course, is some very simple uh, contact map. I mean, it looks like Sn minus one cross Tn. Um, and so what does lambda sigma look like? So let's do this example of, uh, of uh, P2, and maybe I'll keep my kind of color coding here. So I have these three um, rays. And well, so if I look at the cone, just um, if I'm over the, so I'm going to draw here. Here, I, here I'm going to draw a lambda a sigma for P2. So this kind of has six pieces. So for the cones that are just the, the rays themselves, I get a circle for each of them. So this circle is like maybe like theta one is zero. This one is theta two is zero. And then I have another circle that's like minus theta one minus theta two is zero. And then on the big high dimensional cones, then I just get a piece of kind of the, a piece of the zero section or the real positive axis because both because these rays are all linearly independent and uh, and having two of them be zero makes everything have to be zero. So I get something like this. And so topologically, this is just a circle with like kind of three circles attached to it. So, uh, so here we have, for instance, theta one equals theta two is zero. Um, and you can just keep going around. Okay, so now uh, one can define, try to define some Fukai uh, category where either this is like a stop at infinity and it's partially wrapped or you can try and define some kind of asymptotic thing, which what I say next will be one version of how you might think about that. Because I mean, nothing can be, since it's a singular infinity, nothing can really be like actually, uh, well, it could be asymptotic, but it can be actually equal to this thing at infinity in any case. So the second one, second approach is uh, what I would call a monomial uh, uh, division adapted to this fan sigma. So um, what is this? So, uh, and maybe from now on, I'll use the notation delta for such a thing. Um, so what is this? This is, uh, so maybe I'll write it this way. So delta, uh, this is a collection of sets V alpha. Um, for all alpha and A, remember A is just the, the set of primitive generators of the fan. And uh, they satisfy this, these conditions. So each V alpha is a closed subset of Rn. And this is the Rn that's the base of the SYZ vibration. Um, the second thing is that uh, Rn is equal to the union of these things, so they cover uh, Rn. And I mean, that's, that's particular to the fact that we're working with uh, in the mirror of some kind of projective torque variety. Um, then the kind of the key condition for this adapted thing that makes it look kind of similar to being uh, asymptotic to this, this skeleton is that V alpha is contained in the interior of uh, the star of alpha. And then plus there's some technical condition which I won't state, but you could always arrange by choosing the symplectic form for this to be satisfied, but uh, some technical condition uh, to compactify, uh, some con technical condition for uh, compactness of moduli spaces. So, uh, I mean, in particular, I have some kind of I have in mind some condition that would give you some kind of maximum principle type thing. But, um, but if you are more sophisticated analytically, maybe you can do it a different way. So, okay. So let's uh, let me give an, an example of such a thing for uh, for this. So, again, this is taking place in the Rn where the fan lives. So I'll start by drawing the fan for P2, 
and um, and maybe I'll draw some color. So I want like, so the star of this ray, of, of the first ray, looks like this whole region up to the two other rays. So I just tilt it in a little bit. So I get a close set that maybe looks like this. And this whole region is maybe my V10. Uh, maybe I don't want to write. Oh, that's fine. Okay. And uh, for V01, I just do the same thing. So one such of these things would be this one. And then, uh, well, maybe I won't draw. Well, maybe I will have enough color. So then if I look at to the right of this region, this is maybe V minus one, minus one. Okay, so um, that's an example of such a thing. And now uh, I'll say it in a second, but what is this going to be good for? So it, so basically what you should think is that uh, you control, you're going to want to look at things where you control uh, theta dot alpha in V alpha. So now you see that if you compare these two pictures, kind of uh, the regions where things are controlled kind of looks similar, but uh, make that a little bit more precise at some point. Okay, so, so uh, I'm gonna talk about point two, the, the second method more now, and then come back to how it relates to the first one. So, uh, so let's talk about the monomially admissible Fukayasidal category. Um, that I get from from one of these uh, from one of these monomial divisions. So so we'll denote this by uh, f delta of sigma, and up to like the usual technical things, I'll just tell you kind of like what the objects and morphisms are. So the objects are uh, Lagrangians. Uh, L satisfying that theta dot alpha restricted to L uh, is constant um, in the region that above V alpha. So in, but at infinity. So in U inverse of V alpha. So remember U is just this projection to the base. Uh, minus some compact uh, for all alpha in, uh, oops, for all alpha in A. And uh, I'll call uh, such Lagrangians, so we'll call them, if they satisfy this condition, we'll call them maybe to shorten things. Now I'll, I'll write just delta admissible. So these are uh, monomially admissible Lagrangians. And morphisms, uh, this is getting even more rough, but morphisms are roughly defined by, uh, if I take two of these things and look at their uh, homs, then I take the chain complex, uh, I take the floor, floor chain complex of, well, I do something with L0, and with L1. So what is this, this uh, psi? I'll explain a little bit later how you, how you get this thing, but what it does is this uh, is some kind of Hamiltonian isotopy. <clears throat> uh, oops. Okay, uh, ham isotopy that uh, increases all the angles at infinity. So uh, all theta dot alpha at infinity in V alpha so that they're bigger than those of L1. So you kind of use this to, in the sense of in the monomially admissible sense, you use this to push the 
push L0 past uh, L1 so that uh, you can kind of uh, make some sense of how to compute these morphisms because so that they're not asymptotic at infinity and you make some convention. All right, so uh, I mean, it's probably worth doing an example. And the only example that I can like fully draw, so for example, let's go, we've been doing P2, but let's go back down to P1. So uh, I have some cylinder C star that sits over uh, this um, R and well I have my two sets so in this case I mean in this case it's very simple so I can just take uh, V minus one to be uh, that's not what I want, to be my, the interval from minus infinity to zero and so maybe that's everything here and I can take V1 to be the other one. So V1 is the uh, interval from zero to infinity. Okay, so now um, some objects in here, well, I might have, so that the arguments need to be zero and infinity in each of those regions. So I might have something like this. So let's say uh, I might have my L0 looks like that. So that's my L0. Maybe my L1, well, a priori, they might both be 0 and infinity. So maybe my L1 looks something like this. So this is L1. Well, now we need to push L0. So, so here, I mean, so in this region, the argument that we care about is minus theta, and here it's theta. So uh, when I push up L0, it's going to look something like this. So this is psi of L0. So it increases theta in the right end and decreases theta in the left, which is the same thing, of course, as increasing minus theta. And you see that this thing, so these guys have two intersection points here and here. So uh, um, in this case, HOM L0, L1 uh, looks like uh, HOM O with O of 1 on P1. Okay? And I mean, more generally, if you, if you look at these Lagrangian sections, the number of times they twist will tell you what uh, line bundle it is on the mirror. So, uh, Great. So um, we have some general statement of this uh, for these things. So in general, if we take, so uh, let Fs uh, delta sigma, so this is going to be some subcategory of this monomial admissible uh, Fukuyasido category. Uh, so this should be the uh, subcategory consisting of Lagrangian sections. Uh, then a theorem, which I guess in this language is, uh, I wrote it down, but it's really like uh, basically just the argument of Abu Zayed from his thesis, um, says that uh, Fs delta of sigma is quasi equivalent to line bundles, maybe DG enhanced, if you want to make it like that uh, on X. So now uh, the next thing I want to explain a little bit is how this works. So, and this kind of makes it apparent why you want to think about things in terms of this fan picture maybe. So, and why this construction is like particularly nice. So. So how does this work? Well, if I take some divisor D on uh, the toric variety, so each ray, so each uh, one dimensional cone in the fan, of course, corresponds to a divisor. So 
I take some, uh, some divisor that looks like this, uh, that's the sum of these toric divisors at infinity. Well, I mean, it's a classical uh, result from uh, the theory of toric variety that such things correspond to a piecewise, this, this corresponds to a piecewise linear function uh, on sigma. So, I mean, it's a piecewise linear function on Rn, which is allowed to bend along sigma. So, uh, we'll call this Fd, uh, given by, uh, so it's a unique function that satisfies Fd of alpha is minus n alpha uh, for all alpha and a. So uh, maybe for example, if I take d uh, one zero plus maybe two times d zero one on p two, um, this gives me uh, the function. Well, here it has to satisfy that when I plug in one zero, I get uh, minus one, so it looks like minus u one, and then I get two minus two u two. Uh, here I get minus two u two plus two u one since it's coefficient on uh, this on the bottom divisor is zero, and uh, here I get uh, minus u one plus u two. Okay, so and I mean this correspondence is very nice, and it also tells this piecewise linear function tells you. Uh, stuff about the line bundle, like whether it's ample or not, and I mean, also it's cohomology and uh, basically all that you would need to know. And the how this theorem works is that these these functions also correspond to uh, Hamiltonian isotopy classes of uh, delta admissible, monomial admissible Lagrangian sections. Okay, and this is, this is why it's important that this monomial division has some behavior with respect to the fan. So, uh, so how do you construct such a section? So, uh, so, you, so these sections, they look like D of some function, HD, uh, which of course sits inside of T star to the n, or which projects down to my c star to the n. Okay, and what's this hd? So uh, where hd, it's really just it's really just some smoothing of f d of alpha that keeps things monomially admissible. So if you wanted to really write it out, you can just do it by some uh, convolution with a mollifier. Uh, dx. And so what that means is that I have this function here and I, uh, and it, it stays, it stays the same away from, let's say the, from sigma. And the key thing that, the key thing that's happening here is now I have some smoothing region around the rays. And the key thing that makes this work is, well, the difference between these two functions. So the difference between the two piecewise linear functions on the top and the bottom here, because it's a continuous piecewise linear function. So the difference, oh man. Is uh, some function of u2. So, I mean, uh, if I want to interpolate from minus one, uh, minus u1, minus two u2 to minus u1 plus u2, I can do this by just adding a function of u2. And so that, uh, that the flow of this thing won't change, uh, this won't change theta one, which will look like dh, uh, so, which looks like dhd by du1, okay? so. Um, so that's what keep and in that region. So the re, so in the region where I'm controlling theta one, uh, I can control it. So uh, 
So there's a very explicit uh, correspondence between divisors and these Hamiltonian isotopy classes of sections. Okay. Um, and now, uh, now one can compute uh, the floor theory of such a section. If it's ample, there's a very explicit way to do it. But um, in general, one can use the, I mean, we understand very well how Lagrangian sections uh, in, in cotangent bundles, so one can use like Fukaya O to get some Morse theory on the base and relate that to, uh, well, the, there's theorems in toric geometry that tell you how to relate uh, some, the cohomology of your line bundle to some behavior of this function. And you can check that those things match up. And I mean, that's what uh, obviously I did. So um, basically from the same argument, you just get this thing. So, but the nice thing here is that we also have these, so our Lagrangians didn't just, we didn't just construct Lagrangians, we also constructed Hamiltonians. So uh, because we have these Hamiltonians HD, And because of the very explicit nature of this, uh, we get more. So, uh, so the theorem is, uh, so HD, uh, well, just going by the flow of HD, so it preserves this monomial admissibility. So this induces an autoequivalence. Um, Okay, so I have a lot of F, so maybe we'll just call this one script F, FD uh, from the Fukai category to itself, uh, which is mirror to, at least on this category where we understand mirror symmetry. So this is mirror to tensoring by the line bundle generated by D uh, on uh, the subcategory of sections. Okay, and you can say, you can understand this even more. So uh, if D is effective, uh, you also have a, there's a floor theoretic. So just whenever you have some Hamiltonian with the appropriate, in, the, in this kind of non-compact setting, you need some appropriate uh, condition. So what does effective mean, I should say? So this means effective also in the toric sense. So this is the sum over alpha n alpha d alpha uh, with uh, n alpha strictly greater than or equal to zero. Oh, not strictly, that are non-negative. So that's what this word means. So you need those correspond to some asymptotic conditions on the FD that you need to get this. So there's a flow of theoretic natural transformation uh, from, from this functor FD, uh, not from the functor, sorry, from the identity functor to this FD which is mirror to um, tensoring by, uh, by some defining section. So, which you can compute explicitly what it's mirror to. So this is some, this is like the toric defining section uh, of D. Okay, so it's like really some toric monomial that cuts out D. All right, great. Um, and maybe I should also note that, uh, so no, you can also think about these functors. So you can view uh, these FD somehow. Well, I mean, the, the Lagrangians that built them all had strictly these, D, these DHD all strictly satisfied that theta dot alpha was zero at infinity. So I can think about this as some kind of like moving boundary condition. So I can view FD as, uh, as some kind of monodromy of this angles. So uh, theta dot alpha 
is n alpha t. Um, as I move this, I could think about this as a family of categories with that condition. And I mean, so the only reason I, well, I mean, one of the reasons why I bring this up, so you can compare this with Seidel's uh, statement that the Serre functor, that's general for these type of, uh, for, for Kaya Seidel categories, the Serre functor is equal to the total monodromy. So, uh, in, in our case, that says that, that, well, which is exactly what it does, but this push off functor psi, um, we can take this to be HK, where uh, K is the anti canonical. So that's one way to construct this push off that we use to define the morphisms. Okay, great. Um, maybe just to mention one more thing uh, where this, this pers perspective on the Foucault-Seidel category is useful um, is a theorem of Jeff. So, uh, so I'll be, I'll be uh, very vague in the statement, so apologies to Jeff. But, uh, so it says that certain tropical Lagrangians, um, which kind of come from surgeries of these sections, uh, are unobstructed uh, objects of this category. And because they're, uh, they're built by some surgery, you can see that they're mirror uh, to sheaves supported on divisors. So kind of how this works uh, is that you look, you look at, so if you look on the, on the Tory variety, you always have some kind of exact sequence that looks like O to O D to, um, to a sheaf that's supported on the divisor. It's the structure sheaf of the divisor just twisted by itself. And for, so, and you need to make like some conditions on D and these morphisms, but I mean, so you can construct some kind of Lagrangian uh, that lives, uh, lives near some tropical subvariety at the base that, uh, that matches up with this guy. So above we saw how the line bundles look. You can also see how this looks, but maybe like one point here is that in Jeff's construction, this, uh, this, uh, morphism cannot be a toric monomial itself. So it has to be like some strict linear combination of them. So this D, which means that D is not one of the divisors of infinity in the compactification. Okay, so I mean like the absolute baby case uh, of this is that you look in the mirror to P1 and you have this, uh, you have, well, I don't know what colors I used before, but I have this L0 and I have this L1. And you think about uh, the surgery between them. So this is L1. You think about the surgery between them as some kind of symmetric difference. And this gives you, uh, maybe I shouldn't draw it there. So this gives you a uh, Lagrangian that I just delete the parts that, where they overlap a lot and I get some Lagrangian that looks like this. Okay. My artistic ability is severely lacking, but Sorry. So I guess I'm Lagrangian that looks like that. And, uh, and that looks kind of, I mean, if you just push everything back together, it looks like a fiber of this vibrations. In this case, it looks like it lives over some point on the mirror. Okay. So, um, that's kind of the story with this. So, uh, now what's, so 
there's a lot of nice stu nice stuff you can do in that setting, but what's missing, let's say. So, uh, I mean, there's probably like uh, infinite list of things that I wanna, that one could write here, but just a couple of things that I wanna um, emphasize. So, so I already pointed out that this doesn't give you the torque devices themselves. So, uh, so can we get those somehow? Um, also, uh, the back, even going back to Abuzai's original paper on mirror symmetry for torque varieties, the Lagrangians know we don't know that Lagrangian heat constructs generate. So can we show some kind of uh, even for this version or some other version of them? Can we get some kind of generation statement for uh, the Lagrangian sections, or so that we know that we're really getting some kind of full category? And the second thing is uh, relation. So maybe this looks like some kind of wacky definition. So what's the relation to if you're familiar with it, more traditional definition? So or uh, so relation to other uh, Fukai categories that you might think are the mirrors to, to this thing. So, um, and of course I said that there's more, uh, more that you could say. Okay, so let me uh, state the theorem, then I'll try to say a little bit about it. So, um, so the theorem that we're working on so kind of, kind of resolves all three of these questions, like in some sense. So, okay. So it says uh, there's a full. And faithful embedding. of this monomial admissible category, so F S delta this fan into uh, a partially wrapped category. And now uh, the FLTZ skeleton finally makes its comeback. So, so I mean, this is defined like uh, uh, as in Ganatra part and Shende. Um, and the, the image of this functor generates, so. So if we pass this partially wrapped theory, uh, which is kind of looks even bigger a priori than the, these Lagrangian sections do generate. So, and moreover, we kind of, uh, well, there's all these results about how this cat, well, I mean, not all, there's the result that the, that the partially wrapped category is generated by linking disks and we can do this generation in a geometric way. So moreover, the linking disk uh, of lambda sigma. So remember lambda sigma has pieces corresponding to different toric strata. So corresponding to different cones, corresponding to a cone uh, sigma and sigma uh, is mirror to a sheaf supported uh, on the toric strata. Um, let's say V sub sigma. Okay, so that tells you that, I mean, in particular, if we, if we redraw the FLTZ skeleton for P2, oops. So, uh, remember these guys, so here, the, each of these correspond to a divisor. And these correspond to their intersection points. So, uh, so the so the linking disk uh, on maybe I should use color here. So, the linking disk on this uh, part 
corresponds to a uh, to the to the divisor itself corresponds to an object supported on the divisor itself. So that answers kind of the first question. And you can keep you can do you can go further down. So um, and uh, this guy corresponds to like the structure sheaf of the point uh, d one zero intersect d zero one. Okay, so um, that's the statement. So um, so let me just say a few words. I'll finish up with saying a few words about how this works. So um, how so the first thing, the first problem is that these HDs that construct, we constructed for the monomial admissible uh, Fukai Asilo category are not conical. So, uh, so first you need to replace, you need to do some technical step of replace HD with a conical HD hat. So what th this just means on the function setting, this just means that HD hat of a times u is a times hd hat of u for a greater than zero. You can do this by just like using some radius dependent uh, Hamiltonian. So, and and check that the floor, th floor theory doesn't change. Okay, um, and one, uh, one maybe caveat to this is so you do have this embedding of Lagrangian sections that are mirrored to all the line bundles. Um, I won't explain the statement really, but if you look at if you work in the partially wrapped category in the complement of the FLTZ skeleton, if you look at the Hamiltonian isotopy classes of sections, they're not in bijection with pick X. So somehow these sections that come from uh, from from an only admit, from these like tropical Lagrangian sections that come from an only admissibility or however you want to construct them are are special in some sense. So um, now the second step, um, really the main step, is uh, is some kind of surgery statement. So I'll, I'll state it in the in the G GPS sense. So theorem GPS. So there's an exact sequence. Uh, L to LW to uh, to a linking disk at a point P. So here, this guy is just uh, push L through uh, once through uh, through the stop and the sigma uh, at P. So. Um, the picture, so we're, so this is again going back to this like divisor exact sequence. Um, so if we think about these Lagrangians in the complement of this stop, I guess I guess I should have also said we also here the HDs as we constructed them, they are they would be they would be asymptotic to the FLTZ skeleton. So we also need to uh, put push off a little bit. So plus push off from lambda sigma, and you can use uh, psi to do this, or the conical version of psi. Okay, so now the picture is in the one-dimensional case. Well, if I draw, if I think about my, uh, well, in this case, the, the, the conical ones and the non-conical ones coincide, but uh, let's just ignore that. So, so if I look at my, if I look at my function, uh, let's say H1. Well, here, here it's just zero. Here I have some region where it's allowed to do whatever it wants, maybe. And here the function is just U. So if I instead, so I might start with my uh, L0 and say my two, my two components of the FLTZ skeleton are here and here. And I start to flow by H1. Well, if I flow by some time in H1, then uh, nothing happens here. Well, maybe uh, for a while. And 
once I start to get U1, it starts to go up. So here I take phi H1, maybe for some time epsilon of L0. And if I, once I push it through the stop, it's Hamiltonian isotopic to the thing as if I had wrapped it all the way around. And now if one does surgery on this, you get uh, exactly, so here I get the linking disk at uh, this stop. So, so now, uh, now you need to do, so now uh, get, so in higher dimensions, you need to make an argument that like this is a sort of inductive argument. So make uh, inductive argument and to get the generation then you need just need to use the generation statement by linking this okay so uh i think that's a good place to stop so i'll stop there great thanks so much andrew let's give him a round of applause all right uh are there any questions for the speaker Question. Yes, go ahead, Marco. Uh, so, I mean, if if sigma, if the fan is not smooth, so Marco asked, uh, I guess, what happens if the fan is not smooth? Um, well, I think that everything that I said is probably still true if the fan is like simplicial, so that the, the rays are still linearly independent, but maybe not z over z. Um, so, but not a basis of z, I mean, uh, so of zn. So um, then you would have to, then I would have to say where it's like toric stack, like smooth toric stack instead of the toric variety. Um, if things are like totally not smooth, then I haven't really thought about exactly what happens. But then in that case, you would expect that, that the line, I mean, the line bundles will generate perf, but not, uh, but not dbco. So, oh, okay, Marco, maybe Marco is typing more. Okay, Elsa has a question. Yeah, um, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Great. Hi. Hi. Um, maybe I misunderstood. Uh, you said something towards the end about how the admissible ones that you see in the work with Jeff, how you don't get all the line bundles, you get some distinguished collection of line bundles. Or maybe I misunderstood. Um, yeah. Uh, Maybe I misspoke, but so you get all, what I wanted to say is that you get all like the mirrors to line bundles, but yeah. if you take like, if you take like C star to the N with the, with the um, FLT, like say, let's look at Lagrangians and C star to the N that don't intersect the FLTZ skeleton at infinity. Um, yeah. And I ask for such Lagrangians that are sections, mm -hmm. um, then they're not in bijection with, uh, the Picard group of the yeah. mirror. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So like, so because like on P2, like if you blow up P2 and then like take, like for an example, you can blow up P2 at a point and then take like the, the Lagrangian section that would have corresponded to some line bundle that does something non-trivial on the blow up divisor and then push mm -hmm. it forward. It won't intersect. I mean, it didn't intersect this bigger FLTZ skeleton. So it won't intersect this smaller one. But mm -hmm. it's not that that object is not a line bundle in the yeah. DB Co of P2. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's all okay. that I meant by that. Oh, okay. So you so so you do get like the mirrors to all the line bundles, just like 
that there's if you just look at if you look at all the grungian sections in the complement you get more than that uh, so like these like ones that come from the embedding are kind of like distinguished in some sense okay got it thank you See other questions? Okay, so Chris Kuo asked, uh, how left should symbols fit in the story? Yeah, so that's a good question. I mean, uh, they don't fit explicitly in the story anywhere because, uh, because they, um, because, um, well, the admissibility condition is much different. But I mean, there are the, we do know these results of like, so GPS tells us that uh, if we know that this FLTZ skeleton comes from like, so is like a relative skeleton of some Lefschetz vibration, uh, which you're probably imagining in this case, which it is by uh, work of Gamma and and, J and uh, Zhao, then uh, the partially wrapped category stopped at the FLTZ skeleton is equivalent to the partially wrapped category stopped at a fiber of this Lefschetz vibration. And there are symbols there. So uh, you can kind of attempt to say, you can, you can kind of attempt to say something uh, about, um, about the thimbles uh, in that way, but they, you don't like explicitly have a construction of them that fits into here. Um, yeah, so I mean, you can still act on the thimbles by these Hamiltonians because you have this like equivalence, but it's not super straightforward. But I believe you could prove something like along the lines of the every Lagrangian, every, every Lagrangian section is actually like uh, equivalent in the Fukai category to some thimble. Sure. Okay, so Hero asked the question. Um, Hero asked, so this lack of bijection from Lagrangian sections to pick, is there a way to algebraically characterize these extra Lagrangian sections? For example, are they rank one in some way that's blind to the T structure on TB Co? Are they elements of some derived pick that are abstract auto equivalents of the DB Co that don't arise as tensoring by a line bundle? Um, uh, so I don't, I haven't, we haven't really thought about uh, how to classify them in general, I think, unless Jeff wants to correct me. Um, but I would say, so I mean, I would say that maybe, so like the philosophy of what's going on maybe is that this monomally admissible category is more like a, like an infinite, infinitesimally wrapped category. So that should be always mirrored a perf. Whereas then when you pass to the partially wrapped category, you get all of DB Co. So that's kind of where you're picking up extra stuff. But whether, whether there's some like explicit way to see which extra sections you're getting, uh, I would have to think about it a little bit, but that's a good question. Um, maybe we should consider that. Thanks, Hero. Uh, so Catherine asks, uh, <laughs> do you want to ask it, Catherine? <laughs> you want me to yeah, read it? sure. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you know what happens to the Lagrangians, so this Fukai Seidel category that you've constructed, if you do like a toric blow up on your original toric variety, do you know how that affects the Lagrangians on the mirror side? Um, yeah, so uh, that's one th that's another thing that we're kind of working trying to write up at least partially in this is that there's also like if you have some kind of toric morphism like a toric blow up uh then then you do have some then you do at least and at least especially in the blow up case you have some kind of functoriality uh, of these monomially admissible categories or like the par partially wrapped ones and uh so the if you do a blow up you're kind of just add it you're just adding an extra condition. So uh, what's kind of interesting is that if you think about it from the monomial admissible setting, then so 
the you can if you have a line bundle if you have an object that's manually admissible before you blow up and you look at it in the blown up thing then it'll be minimally admissible there because so maybe let me draw this uh, so like you had you had some fan like this right and here you're say controlling theta one and here you're controlling theta two and on the and on this big region you're controlling theta one and theta two right but now you add now you do a blow up you add some ray like this so now you add some region where you're just controlling theta one plus theta two. But if you know the argument of, but if you know that theta one and theta two are controlled, of course you get that theta one plus theta two is controlled. So that says that you have some, so this would give you some kind of pullback uh, functor. Uh, so, and the reason maybe philosophically why this works out really well is that if you pull back a line bundle, you get a line bundle. So, uh, uh, so on. You could even do this just on sections. Okay. And now, if you want to do push forward by the, if you do push forward, well, the same argument tell you it doesn't work in the monomial admissible case, but it does work by what I, what uh, basically what the example that I gave uh, to Elsa, um, that you can push forward in the partially wrapped thing. So if you're willing to kind of go back and forth between these two things, then you can understand this functor. I don't know if that's what you were asking. But. Yes, thank you. That's very cool. Okay. You have a question from Oleg and then one from Jesse. Okay. Um, Oleg, do you want to talk or you want me to read it? Uh, yeah, I can talk. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering um, if there's some more general geometric situation where you've got these automorphisms. Because, um, I mean, this reminded me of, uh, of Zach's swappable steps where you get this monodromy uh, automorphism. And I mean, I think those uh, come up from this uh, Lefschetz picture as well. Um, I was wondering if you had thought about. Uh, like more general situations. Yeah, so, um, and if one wants to have these like uh, Hamiltonian, like in the, the functor is induced by Hamiltonians kind of at infinity. Uh, so now you might wonder, okay, what happens when you put some kind of sing So the, the, the good question is to say is like, what do you do when you put some kind of like singularities in this SYZ vibration? Can you still, get some kind of monodromy functors that come from Hamiltonians? I mean, I think the answer is yes. Um, uh, so Abby Ward and I have been kind of thinking about this in the two-dimensional case. I think we do know how to construct it when the base is two-dimensional. I mean, when the singularities of the fibers are more complicated in higher dimensions, I'm not totally sure how one would do it, but, um, but uh, at least for like something that's like kind of like toric at infinity, I think you could, do uh, something and then you, the, I mean, the story will be more complicated, but I mean, I can tell you maybe more about it uh, if we have time. But I'm not totally sure if you could, how to relate it to like swapping stops, but maybe you can. Maybe Zach can say something. But. I mean, I thought this uh, swapping automorphism was uh, was mirrored to the Serre functor, where you tensor with the canonical line bundle. Ah, uh, I see, I see. Yeah, so, um, yes. So, I mean, in this case, I mean, if you want to relate the two things, then, like, in this case, what you should think about this, like, so we have this, we have this Hamiltonian coming from the canonical line bundle. And basically what it does, if it was a, if I was in the Leschitz vibration instead of like working with the skeleton itself, it's basically taking the stop. Well, for me, I put all my stops like at plus infinity, which is maybe against like the normal uh, convention, but it's kind of taking the stop and rotating it around like this. So, uh, so I mean, I would expect that 
in general, I mean, I mean, and Seidel says that, like, I mean, in one of the Lesch's vibration papers, at least conjectures, and I think it's if you have like uh, an actual like on the thimble subcategory, then then you then you know this, but like the the um, that this total mononodromy of like moving the stop all the way around is always a serif function. I'm not sure if I answered your question still, but. Wait, maybe I can answer okay. Jesse's question, then maybe then we, we can, come back to this. this yeah, one. that sounds good. Okay, so uh, Jesse Wong asks, does it make sense to talk about non-complete sigma? Um, yes, I mean, at this point, we haven't, like, written anything, like, uh, that, that definitively does non-complete sigma in the monomial missile case. Of course, like, you can take the FLTC skeleton and just do the partially wrapped category and you'll get something. Uh, but also like this, the fact that in the monomial admissible case, like uh, we know that we have this natural transformation for any effective divisor. So if we wanna take some sigma that's just like removing some divisor from a compact thing, then we have this natural transformation. We have that it comes from a Hamiltonian. So if we wrap with respect to that Hamiltonian and push off like a little bit in the other directions, then uh, if one works out the details of that, then that category will just be equivalent to localizing in this section, which of course is, gives me the toric variety minus that divisor. Um, if you wanna work even in more general with like things that are not, uh, that are not just like take a divisor out from some projective thing, then, then Probably one could set something up, but it's a little bit less clear if it works or not. All right, well, um, let's thank the speaker again and uh, thank you all for attending and you're welcome to stay around for the informal discussion um, after. So thank you, Andrew. Thanks. All right, I'm going to stop recording.